Do you know what it's called when something turns from a solid directly into a gas? When you very slowly turn back into a solid, you turn into a special kind of solid. Do you know what that is? So what we're doing right now is actually making iodine crystals. Hey, and welcome to Midnight Science Club. My name is Nick. I am a wizard in training, along with... Elliot, I'm also a wit. Would you say that you're, you're a higher ranking wit than me? Yeah, I'm a first class wit. First class wit, I'm a half wit. So Elliot, I wanted to talk about uh, an element from the periodic table today called iodine. Have you ever heard of iodine before? Uh, yeah, my math books use it sometimes. Your math books use iodine? I would think it would be your chemistry book. What kind of math problems do you do with iodine? How much of a 10% solution of iodine must be added to a 5% solution of iodine to get a 7% solution of iodine? Sounds like math, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not gonna make you do math today, is that Yay. okay? <laughs> iodine, the way that I'm used to seeing it, comes in like a little bottle, it's like a liquid, and you put it on cuts. At least they used to use that to sanitize cuts before like Neosporin or something like that. That yeah, it's out. like brown. Yeah, and it stains your skin. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff I'm talking about. That iodine that you get is actually iodine powder dissolved in alcohol. Uh, it's not the, the pure iodine. I actually have some pure iodine here with me. Iodine is really useful for stuff like wound care because it always wants an electron. It's very hungry for an electron. So it will react with stuff and usually neutralize those germs that are living on your skin. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So what do you notice about this this bottle of iodine I have here? It looks really, really old. It looks old because it is old. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so this bottle of iodine actually belonged to Wizard 2. Wizard 2 was Dr. Hubert Allier. He was a professor at Princeton, a chemistry professor, who would do crazy science demonstrations for his students, and they called him Dr. Boom. That'd be a good name to have. Yeah. I like things that That's go cool. boom. If you're gonna be a doctor, I feel like Dr. Boom's a cool title, right? Well, Jake, Wizard 4, actually studied chemistry under Wizard 2, Dr. Allier. Wow. And that's why he's got the uh, the old iodine here. Let's go ahead and open it up and look inside. So I'm about to use bad chemistry practice because I'm about to use this spoon to go in and get some out. Do you know why that's a bad idea? Uh, Cause it could contaminate the chemicals, right? Yeah, you know, I don't know what's on this spoon and I'm about to reach it down into this iodine and then get whatever's on, whatever cheese is on this spoon inside of the uh, bottle of iodine. Um, but first of all, the wizard told me that he's already kind of gotten a lot of cheese in here that he had to get out later. So I don't think I'm doing anything wrong by making it a little bit worse. So if you wanted to do this right, what you would do is actually pour this into another container and then use the scoop to move it around from another container. Okay. All right, let's take a look and look at the iodine. What do you notice? It's like black and flaky. Black and flaky, really dark, right? Yeah. Does that make sense with what you've seen before? The like brown iodine liquid? Mm -hmm. Is it the color you would expect? Mm, I mean, I kind of expected it to be more brown rather than like black. Okay, well, we're gonna do a little chemistry demonstration with this iodine. Do you wanna help me set it up? Yes, okay. very much so. Hey, it's Jake Wizard 4 here at Faraday Studios. We got our friends over at Hardware Science to put together a sweet little bundle. We call it the Green Bundle. It's a book and a couple of sweet kits that are on sale. Normally this would go together for what, 60 bucks, I heard him say? Where we're gonna sell it to you for 40 bucks. These are called hardware science kits and they make a whole bunch of them. They're really cool. You use items that are in the kit and a few things from around the house that allow you to learn how to think like a scientist. This kit is called desktop hydroponics. You say, I don't think I have anything to do with hydroponics, do I? Yes, you do. It's a part of your daily life. Balloon science. You can get a lot of trouble with balloons and you can also learn a lot of science, especially basic physics and some of the secrets of Newton's laws of motion. The Wizard's Book of Science Secrets by, who is it? Who is it? Wizard 4, son of a gun. He must be a good looking guy. Aha, the green bundle. Here's this setup, this hydroponics. It demonstrates how water moves through the soil and gets up to the seed and the seed transpires and grows. This is a completed version of the balloon powered car, a construction and analog thinking. If you want to get your hands on this, just check down below and, and it'll show you how to do it. You can order this stuff, but I encourage you to do it quick because we've got a limited number of these and we're not gonna be selling them very long because they're gonna go fast. People really love these kits, so get your hands on them. All right, so here we've got a ring stand that's meant for holding chemistry stuff when you're doing experiments. Yep. Uh, and the next thing we need is that piece of mesh. Yep, it goes right there. On top of that mesh is gonna be this beaker. Do you know what that mesh is for? To give the beaker something to sit on, but at the same time, like, make it so that the heat can go through, right? Exactly. 
The other benefit that it has is it helps a little bit to distribute the heat uh, so that we don't get a, a hot spot on the bottom of the glass. Yeah. What do you think would happen if we put a bunch of heat in one spot on this piece of glass? It would probably melt it. Exactly. So you have to be kind of careful when you work with glass like this that you don't overheat it and melt it. You got to distribute the heat evenly and that sort of thing. All right, so I've got a beaker. You've got a source of fire there. What do you think I have to do next? Iodine? Yeah, we got to put the iodine in there. Okay, we've got a beaker full of iodine and you have a source of heat. You ready to light it? Yes. Fire, good. <laughs> uh, the beaker's starting to fog up. It's definitely getting warm, right? Yeah. You're gradually bringing the beaker up to temperature. Tell me when you see something else. It's starting to smoke and it's starting to turn purple. It is turning purple. There's like a purple haze inside. Exactly. Do you know what's happening? Iodine is turning Gaseous? Exactly. You can go ahead and put the torch down now. Just put it right under the middle. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm gonna take this piece of glass. It's mm -hmm. called a watch glass. I'm gonna put it right over the top. And then can you hand me that water? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm gonna take just a little bit of water and put it here on the top of this glass. You just saw iodine turning into a gas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it started out as a solid. It wasn't boiling. It wasn't like a liquid that was boiling and turning yeah. into a gas. Yeah. So do you know what it's called when something turns from a solid directly into a gas? Transpirating? It's called sublimation. Sublimation. You might see sublimation with something like dry ice. It's a big block of dry ice that just turns into a gas and disappears without turning into a liquid. Yeah. The same thing is happening in here with the iodine. The iodine is turning directly into a gas inside of this container. What do you think happens when iodine is a gas and then gets cold again? Probably turns back into a solid. Straight back into a solid, right? Do you mm -hmm. know what that's called? Uh, nope. It's called deposition. Like Deposition. Like okay. to deposit, right? That makes sense. Um, have you ever had like a really cold winter where ice forms on your window? Yeah. That's another example of deposition. It didn't rain, it was just moisture in the air being deposited on the very cold glass. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I've put a piece of glass at the top of this beaker mm -hmm. with water in it. What do you think that that water is doing to the glass, and why do you think I did that? Probably cooling the glass down. Yeah, so if there's oh. a- Oh, so then when the, the hot gas hits the, the cold glass on top, then it'll turn back into the solid iodine. Exactly. This is why you're a wit first class. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off now because I think we've added enough heat to vaporize all of the iodine that we put in that beaker. Yeah. You know what we have to do now? What? Wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening while we're sitting here and waiting is the gaseous iodine in there is collecting on that top of that, that glass up there. Mm -hmm. And as it does, it's turning back into a solid, just like you said. But when you very slowly turn back into a solid, you turn into a special kind of solid. Do you know what that is? No. It's called a crystal. Crystal structures are any kind of regular atom shape that repeats, and usually they're pretty flat. So if you've ever seen like a quartz crystal, Something like this. So what we're doing right now is actually making iodine crystals. What I'm waiting for is you can actually kind of see the gas iodine in there it moves around a little bit and it'll actually get a little bit thinner over time. So in here right now it's like solid purple, but it'll just slowly get less and less purple and then we'll eventually be able to see inside of the glass again and then we can pick up that watch glass and see what's inside. Can you start to see something in there? Yeah, it's like a whole bunch of crystals. It looks like icicles. What are they doing? Hanging there. Hanging from the top? Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yeah. You ready to see some crystals? It, wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of crystals. And they form that's so fast, so right? cool. All from iodine, collecting on the surface of that glass. Do you want to see some even bigger crystals? Yeah. So before you got here, I made some really big iodine crystals. Even bigger than those? Even bigger. Do you want to see those? Yeah. Okay, so to make them bigger, I actually did what we did multiple times so I could get the crystals to grow even longer. That makes sense. Whoa, those are like three times as long as the ones we have in there. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They're huge. And they're so thin and brittle, but they're also so shiny. Yeah, they're super thin, like thinner than paper. Like a piece of glass almost, right? Yeah. What else do you notice about it? Other qualities? They're pretty dark colored. They are kind of all the same like width. Mm -hmm. They just are varied in height. 
So what did you do today at Midnight Science Club? I turned iodine into iodine vapor, okay. and then I turned that iodine vapor into these iodine crystals. It's pretty cool, right? Very cool. All right, I had a bunch of little crystal pieces fall here on the table. What do you notice about what happened? Like stained the area around it. Yeah, do you notice anything about the crystals too? They look uh, blacker. Do they look like they're getting smaller? They were yeah. pretty big when they fell, right? Yeah, they do look like they're getting smaller. So what do you think is happening? You see that they're getting smaller. Uh -huh. They look almost like mushy, right? And there's mm -hmm. a, a brown stain in the area where I dropped them. Are they them. turning like back into a gas? Exactly, that's exactly what's happening. Oh. If I leave this beaker here, leave it out overnight, all of this iodine will slowly evaporate back into a gas and just disappear. I don't even have to clean it up. Well, thank you so much for joining us at Midnight Science Club. I've been Nick, wizard in training with... Elliot. Uh, and we're all over social media. Do you know where you can find us? Oh uh, yeah, they can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon as well. Nailed it, exactly. If you've ever seen... <laughs> if you've ever seen sublimation or deposition, tell us about us. At... You want to do it? Uh, you're, sure. you're, you're better at this sure. than I am. <laughs> so if you've ever seen sublimation or deposition in real life, tell us about it below in the comments. Exactly what he said. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Midnight Science Club. I feel like we learned some pretty cool science today, huh? Yeah. If you like the science activities we did today and you want to do some more with your kids or your family, we have a series of books. They're called The Wizard's Book of Science Secrets. Yeah, and we even have some kits to as well. Yeah, science kits, science activities you can do with the uh, stuff you can find at a hardware store. Links to all that stuff's down in the video description, and uh, if you buy that stuff, it helps support Midnight Science Club, helps support what we do, and we think that's pretty cool.